Good morning. Good morning. It's kind of fun that you get a flip flop between Brian and us and back to that. But yeah, we're excited to keep studying First Samuel here. This morning we're going to be in First Samuel 2, 1 through 11. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Hannah praying to the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. If we're following from yesterday, uh, from First Samuel 1, presumably it's Hannah's response to uh, receiving a son and then handing him off to the service of the Lord. And so we're going to hear what she prays. Mm -hmm. uh, Kate, take it away. Do you want to read it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> and Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble bind on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren have borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, and the boy was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli the priest. God, uh, we come before you in humility, and we thank you and praise you for giving us your word. Please guide us through the study of First Samuel, that we may be drawn closer to you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, so this this prayer uh, seems to be nestled in right between um, the handing off of um, Samuel and then them returning home uh, from their trip to the temple to make their their sacrifice. And so, this is Hannah's prayer between kind of between those two things. Mm -hmm. Do you have any initial initial thoughts as you read this? Um, yeah, it's, uh, very, I don't know, inspiring, uh, to hear what Hannah is praying and what sh truths she is claiming here of God, um, as she gives her son, who she had prayed for for so long, up to the Lord, um, that though I'm sure there was great rejoicing when she had Samuel, um, here she is giving him up and going to leave her son um, who she had prayed for. Um, and yet her heart, it still says, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. Um, I rejoice in your salvation. And just like continuing on as she like says, the Lord is her rock and, and knows that the Lord is in control of all things is quite encouraging to read. Yeah. She talks a, a lot about what we call the Lord's sovereignty. Um, and the Lord's control over things. And she does this by contrast, contrasting, like, essentially two types of people. The kind of like the low and the, and the downcast and the, and the high and mighty. Mm -hmm. And one of, one of the themes that we see is that God kind of lifts up the low, um, kind of to the status of the mighty. He says, uh, lifts the needy, uh, uh, from the ash heap to make them sit with the princes. So those are the people that are the high. So it's the Lord's control and sovereignty of, of raising up the low to mighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of like the theme of, of Hannah's prayer is God's sovereignty by comparing and contrasting these two mm -hmm. types of people and how the Lord is is for the low and mighty. Mm -hmm. and, but, but saying that the mighty uh, cannot rely on their might. Yeah. 
Yeah. In some ways, this reminds me a lot. I think it's kind of funny how we, um, how we're doing this section because it reminds me so much of Psalms, um, which is, which many were written by Hannah's descendants beyond. No, that's not true. Not Hannah's I lied. Don't listen to that. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just the poetry of it and, um, recognizing God's power. Um, and also, um, kind of seeing what happens to those who are wicked or an enemy or just not, um, with God. Um, so, um, for example, uh, even just verse four, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble bind on strength. Or the Lord, well, no, the next, the next section. Um, uh, verse nine, he will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness for not by might shall a man prevail. Mm -hmm. um, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces against them. He will thunder in heaven. Um, yeah, just the call against the evil that got there they will be judged yeah i i love how hannah opens this prayer um in verses one and two she opens it with just complete and utter adoration to the lord mm -hmm. um saying things like my heart exalts the lord um, there's none holy like the lord there's none besides you uh, basically, this this complete and utter adoration of the Lord uh, before she even goes into her prayer, which is even more adoration, talking about his um, the characteristics of his, his sovereignty and might, and it's just so fitting that this is kind of like a response to a, an answer to prayer and and a fulfillment of the commitment Hannah made as well. So she, she actually kept the vow that she gave to the Lord. Uh, the Lord provided a son, and then Hannah handed the son over to the Lord for service. Mm -hmm. And her, her response to, to completing this, this vow was just this, this utter adoration for the Lord and this description of God's sovereignty. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um... um yeah i feel like there might be particular verses in here um verse five i found particularly interesting um just understanding the metaphor because to understand poetic language you have to understand exactly what they're saying because it's not literal um but those who were full have hired themselves out for bread but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger so this is talking about kind of the results of like this is happening to those who, I don't know. I don't know who exactly this is saying it's happening to. Um, um, it, it seems like she's comparing types of people who are high and mighty and who have gotten there fully reliant on themselves and their might mm -hmm. versus those who are, <clears throat> are low uh, or, or <clears throat> yeah, those who are low or or needy or poor mm -hmm. and who are relying on the Lord mm -hmm. or I think like even verse 5 here because the second half of verse 5 too it's pointing out how it, kind of this backwards kind of way that things are or um, what the Lord can do is turn things that seem good into not good things or things that seem terrible and hopeless into good things so verse 5 those who are full <clears throat> have hired themselves out for bread so they're already full, and that's a great thing. Great, you're satisfied, you have food, you're not hungry. But then they hire themselves out, and they they just try to seek more. They they do work so that they can have even more food, um, get more bread, um, and that's just not good. That's the like excessive part of it, where that's actually not good, and I guess an example of gluttony. But those who are hungry have ceased to hunger. What's interesting is it's not saying here that the those who are full are now starving and the hungry are now full. It's it's still the same state, but 
just like a more intense version of that or a relief from that. So, but those who are hungry have ceased to hunger. Not those who are hungry are full, but those who are ceased to be hungry. That there's some, that they have been satisfied with nothing um, still. And that's kind of what the second chunk there says. The Baron has born seven. So that's exciting. One who was barren now has seven children. Um, but she who has many children is forlorn. Um, and just showing that she has many, but that is not what is satisfying. Um, just find those verses interesting to meditate on. Yeah. Any other thoughts? It's... It kind of reminds me of a similar situation where um, God was was going to give a child to uh, Abraham uh, through Sarah, but um, Abraham and Sarah try to take, take it into their own hands. And whereas here uh, we see that Hannah actually trusts in the Lord. And actually, we don't. We don't even see the Lord answering her initial her initial prayer in First Samuel uh, with a promise. He, we don't see that the Lord saying He's going to give her a son. He does, but we never saw Him promise that. But she trusts that He is going to to hear her prayer. And I feel like this this prayer here is kind of <laughs> the contrast of those two things. Not necessarily exactly. But the, the like the thought process of how we interact with God is kind of the contrast of those those two things the, the trusting in the Lord um, versus those who are kind of trusting in themselves uh, where we see you know the, the rich trying to get more with more bread uh, the mighty trying to prevail with their might um, versus uh, Lord the Lord being the one raising up the lowly or the poor mm-hmm yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Any other thoughts about this? No, I think we could, uh, maybe do some application stuff. We talked, we, we talked a lot about explaining the, the general theme of this prayer and even exploring some of the metaphors, for us, but what are some things that we can take away, uh, from this? Do you have any are you asking me for oh application yeah. not interpretation i think i think we did some in- interpreting here do we need to talk about jesus we can yeah that could be part of the application if you want um yes i need a moment so if you have thoughts please answer um well i, th- I think one of the the applications is to uh Kind of is to trust in the Lord's sovereignty, um, that He He is fully in control, um, and turn your heart to exalt the Lord in His sovereignty, um, <laughs> because what what Hannah says here is, there is none besides you. There is no rock uh, like our God, and rock means foundation, like st- things that are things that structures are are built upon, is is as a rock. Cause, um, so. Yeah, our big application from that is you know, put your put your trust knowing that God that there is none besides him, that more bread is not going to satisfy you the way God can. Um, having tons of children and putting your hope in in bearing children isn't gonna satisfy you the way God can. Um, so yeah, just I think that's a big application for me is you know, putting the trust in fully in God. And turning my heart heart to exalt him, uh, knowing that there is none beside him. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think a connection to Christ, because as we always talk about, like um, Christ is, um, and foreshadowing of Christ is seen all throughout Scripture. Um, so every passage has some sort of connection to um, to Christ and the gospel. Um, and so one thing is, I think. Some of this does reflect um, even the Sermon on the Mount when it's talking about um, kind of these contra. I'm trying to get there. It's really a struggle. Um, what like the Beatitudes? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comfort comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Um, yeah, and it continues on. But any of the, particularly that, and as Christ continues to teach about um, God's kingdom and showing how the lowly will be exalted. Um, he raises up the poor and lifts the needy and makes them sit with princes. And that's just a general theme often of the Lord um, and the, the scriptures is that he, uh, what seems